Hi class, uh, what I want to do in this video is just walk you through a quick application problem of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Okay, here it goes. According to the Department of Health, 40% of adults will experience the flu or flu-like symptoms during the cold season. So what this is saying is right here is that the population proportion of people who will experience flu or flu-like symptoms is 40% each year. Okay, now suppose 500 adults are selected at random and the sample proportion who will experience the flu or flu-like symptoms is recorded. So what they're telling me here is I'm going to take a sample. So that's my n is equal to 500 adults um, and record the sample proportion. Now, every time we take a sample of 500 adults, we might not get the same proportion who experience the flu. Sometimes it'll be below 40%. Sometimes it'll be above 40%. Okay, so the first question says, describe the sampling distribution of the sample proportion okay above so i.e. the sample proportion of the 500 adults will experience the flu or flu-like symptoms well here's what we know because the sample size is large the sampling distribution will be normally distributed with and so when something's normally distributed, we always report what the mean is. So the average proportion we should get will should be equal to whatever the population proportion is, P. So it should be equal to 0 0.40. Okay, so what we're saying here is, look, sometimes we're going to be below 40%, sometimes we're going to be above 40%, but on average we should be equal to 40%. Okay, so what is the standard error in this case? Well, if you look back in your notes here, the, the formula for sigma... Uh, sub p hat is equal to the square root of whatever the population proportion is times 1 minus whatever the population proportion is divided by the sample size. So that would be 0 0.40 times 1 minus 0 0.40 divided by the 500 adults. So let's grab our trusty calculator and do this, okay? So we're going to take the square root of 0 0.40 times in parentheses 1 minus 0 0.40 close the parentheses divided by the 500 adults and let's take this out four decimal places so it looks like it's 0 0.0219 so I've got the mean and I've got the standard error now all right, so now the question becomes, what's the probability the sample proportion is less than uh, 0 0.38? So it's the probability that the p hat that I get is less than 0 0.38. Well, the good news is we're just going to use our graphing calculator to do this real quickly. All right, so since we know it's normally distributed, I've got a mean and standard error, and I asked you for a probability. I'm going to go second function distribution and I want normal CDF. So the lower here, I'm gonna put a ridiculous number like negative 99999, and then look back at the problem. I want it to go up to 0 0.38. So 0 0.38. The average here was 0 0.40, that's why we found that, and the standard error was 0 0.0219. So if you have to plug this in by hand on the TI-83, it should look like this. Lower, upper, mean, standard error. And you should get that, 0 0.1806. So I'm just going to write this just so you can see in the, in the PowerPoint how I wrote this. It was negative 9999, comma 0 0.38, comma 0 0.40, comma 0 0.0219. And that was equal to 0 0.1806 when I rounded. We got it. All right, so now let's see the next one here. What is the probability that it's between 0 0.37? Sorry, 0 0.37 and 0 0.41? Well, that's going to be that normal CDF that we've been talking about. The lower here is going to be 0.37. The upper is going to be 0.41. 
the mean was 0 0.40 and the standard error doesn't change here. So let me go back to my graphing calculator. I'm gonna go second function distribution, normal CDF, my lower here was 0 0.37 my upper here is 0 0.41. The mean and standard deviation don't change, or standard error doesn't change here. So it looks like it should be 0 0.5907 when I round it. All right, class, so the, this was the hard part here. And then once you get this, I think it's pretty straightforward of how you plug it right into your graphing calculator. All right, class, I hope this helps.